The American healthcare system is incredibly complex. It's complex in how we pay with six different payment rates to hospitals. It's complex in how we deliver care with doctors, nurses, home health care agencies, dialysis facilities, hospices, not to mention all the drug companies, the device manufacturers, the regulators. This incredibly complex system wouldn't be an issue were it not that it causes serious, serious problems. Traditionally, the problems are classified as problems of access, cost, and quality. We're going to add to that problem list medical malpractice. But let's begin with the access problem. There are 310 million Americans in the United States, and 50 million of them are uninsured. About 12 million are undocumented aliens, but 38 million citizens don't have health insurance. Who are they? Well, they have five characteristics. They typically are poor, minority, young, childless adults, and surprisingly, they're all, almost all working. Let's begin with the poor. Most of the people who don't have health insurance are poor. Their families earning under $44,000 a year, and about 40% of them actually are below the poverty line. The uninsured also tend to be minorities. Most whites and Asians actually have employer-sponsored insurance, but most blacks and Hispanics do not have employer-sponsored insurance, and they are disproportionately uninsured. The uninsured also tend to be young. If you're over 65, you have Medicare, and if you're under 18, you actually get coverage through CHIP and Medicaid and private insurance. The 19 to 34 year old age group is the highest level of uninsured. In addition, most of them tend to be adults without children because parents and children can often get Medicaid or CHIP. Now most Americans think, well, those people who are uninsured, they're kind of like what Ronald Reagan called welfare queens. They're unemployed, they're on public assistance. Turns out that's not true at all. The vast majority of people who are uninsured are actually workers or in a family with a worker. They are working hard. So why don't these people have health insurance? Well, the first reason is most of them work for small employers. Employers with fewer than 10 workers tend not to offer health insurance. In addition, they're in industries that are low paying and don't offer health insurance, like retail sales. Furthermore, they're in low wage jobs. They're in jobs that don't have enough extra to provide fringe benefits like health care. They also are concentrated in the South and the Mountain Belt. The leading places without insurance are places like Texas, where a quarter of the population doesn't have insurance. Florida and California. We are finally, with the Affordable Care Act, actually making a dent. Polling by the Gallup organization and other data suggests that there's been a steady decline in the uninsured rate since the Affordable Care Act went into effect. Is not having health insurance any big deal? After all, a lot of people without health insurance get health care. And in the 2012 presidential election, Mitt Romney repeatedly said that no one died because they didn't have health insurance. Well, one reason to have health insurance is actually to reduce financial burdens from unexpected illness. In Oregon, they had an interesting experiment. They wanted to expand their Medicaid program, but they only had enough money to cover 30,000 people, and 90,000 people were eligible. So they picked who got in the Medicaid expansion by lottery. Uh, and those people were followed, as well as the people who didn't get the Medicaid were also followed. Three important results happened. First, those people who got Medicaid almost eliminated catastrophic medical expenditures defined as paying more than 30% of their income for medical care. Second, the number of people who had medical debt went down substantially. And third, the people who, had, who skipped payments to other bills to pay their medical bill also decreased substantially. But the real question is, does having insurance affect your health outcomes? And it turns out here the data are somewhat conflicting. That Oregon study, which followed people for two years, showed that having Medicaid did not actually improve some important health measures, blood pressure control, cholesterol, or the glucose in hemoglobin for diabetic patients. Now a lot of people said it's too early to tell and there weren't enough patients with those problems to really find out. 
Other studies have showed substantial impacts from not having health insurance. Joseph Doyle from the Sloan School of Management at MIT followed people who had had car accidents and were insured and not insured. You would think being insured wouldn't affect that. If you had a serious injury in a car accident, you'd be rushed to the emergency room, taken care of whether you had health insurance or not. Well, Professor Doyle found out that uninsured people received 20% less treatment than the privately insured patients and had a chance of dying that was 40% higher. And this is even after he controlled for the type of car, the hospital you went to, the type of accident, the neighborhood. It turns out that it's a serious problem. In fact, you could die if you didn't have health insurance. A second major study relates to the cancer care. It turns out that the American Cancer Society looked at the uninsured versus people who had private insurance and how they survived cancer. The usual measure in cancer is five-year survival rate. Turns out that the difference in survival between people who had private insurance and those people who were uninsured was actually about 12%. Now, if I had a drug that could improve the survival of cancer patients 12%, I'd be pretty famous. Well, a lot of people have criticized that analysis saying, look, if you're poor, you typically don't take care of yourself. You might smoke more, drink more. And those, the cancers related to smoking and drinking, they're worse. They're lung cancer, esophageal cancer, and Patients often die earlier of those. In addition, if you don't have health insurance, you might get to the doctor later. You might have a bigger tumor that was less likely to be cured. It turns out when you control for all those factors, you look at the same kind of cancer, the same size, the same moment of presentation. Even then, not having health insurance actually leads to a higher death rate. So not having health insurance is both worse from a financial burden standpoint and worse from a health outcome standpoint. It turns out that having millions of Americans without insurance is also worse for those of us who actually have insurance. We pay for it. We pay for it in a number of ways. First, there's what's called cross-subsidization. Actually, hidden in our insurance bill is payment for those patients who go to the hospital who don't have insurance. Because after all, the hospital has to care for them, pay the doctors, pay for the radiological equipment, pay for the lab tests, those bills are hidden in what they actually charge us. Second of all, the disproportionate share hospital. When Medicare pays hospital to care for the uninsured, that money comes out of our taxes. A not-for-profit uh, think tank called Families USA actually tried to quantify how much the rest of us pay for patients who don't have insurance and total provision of care to the people who weren't insured was about $116 billion. Well, about $43 billion of that was paid out of pocket by people who weren't insured. About $30 billion came from charity and other government programs. But it turned out that about $43 billion came from those of us who were insured paying for the uninsured. That's actually about $1,000 per family that has insurance. So we can see that not having insurance is a major consequence in the American healthcare system. About 50 million people don't have insurance, and most of those people are young, healthy workers, and it has very bad consequences for people not to have insurance. Bad financial consequences, bad consequences for their health and chance of dying, and the rest of us are actually paying for it. Next. We're going to look at the high cost of the healthcare system and the consequences of paying so much money for healthcare.